Hey, 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 speak easy podcast listeners. So here's the thing. I can tell you this because we've been on this journey for some time and with over 15 plus years of sales and retail experience, I have a confession. I hate sales. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, you're, you're probably thinking, well, why did you ever try to do Avon and some of the other things? I don't know, but I thought it was a good idea at the time. Here's the thing. It's not necessarily that I hated sales. It's just that I hated some of the sales practices that were out there and that were being pushed upon everyone. So I'm excited to have this conversation today and to give you a little more insight so that way you don't have to hate sales. I, I got you on this one. I got you on this one. And so thank you so much for my guest that is here with me today. Hello, Rob. How are you? Great, Altaviz. I love that intro because, boy, we have got to address that problem you've got. I feel like your doctor. I'm your sales doctor, Altaviz. All right. We're going we're gonna to treat this little, this little malady you have. We're going we're gonna to put it to bed once and for all. That, you know what? That's what we're going to title this. This episode will be your sales doctor's appointment. That's what There you go. There you go. <laughs> Tell the studio audience a little bit about yourself, and then we'll dive into today's topic. Well, I'm the author of an international best-selling book called The Sales Game Changer, How to Become the Salesperson People Love, which I know sounds like a tall order, especially if you're talking to Alto V's right now. But um, I started a company uh, 26 years ago called Game Face, and uh, we are a sales training, sales consultancy, and we work with organizations and individuals all over the world. And uh, it's been about 50,000 or so people I've personally trained and uh, about 400 brands, of big companies, small companies, startups, um, enterprise, historical businesses, uh, people selling everything from sports to entertainment to um, tech to retail, professional and financial services. Um, and it seems like everything in between. And, uh, and so I can't wait to have this conversation with you, Altavis, about how we, can, how we can maybe give you a new perspective on sales that's going to make you not only become the salesperson people love even more, but help you love sales. That part. So let's, let's dive back, you know, a couple of years, because, you know, I'm not that old, you know, <clears throat> right. let's dive back a couple of years. But I've worked in retail with jewelry. I've worked in retail, KB Toys. I know it's, it feels like everywhere I've worked is no longer around. This is a horrible <laughs> start to the episode. Okay. So KB Toys, I've worked for Payless. Yes, they're no longer around either. Just cover your face. It's okay. Um, but uh, I've also done Avon. I've done Herbalife, you know, as far as the MLMs. And so I'm an introvert. And so actually walking up to someone or being the person that was coming on to people and telling them about this amazing, that was just never my thing. Oh. But the reason why I was just doing so well in retail was because I was always doing well with sales. I had a high number of sales and I could always upsell really mm -hmm. well. And so I know how, why I was able to do that. It was because I was a great listener and I was always able to go, you know, make sure that I, I gave them something that they really wanted and that they really needed. But the initial sale, horrible. <laughs> hmm. So what are we going to do about that, right? Well, let, let's back up. Like you said, let's back up, back up a couple of years. Let me back up a couple of sentences. First of all, the fact that you're an introvert gives you an advantage in sales. Believe it or not, most people think it's the opposite. Most people think you got to be super enthusiastic and loud and on the verge of obnoxious to be a successful salesperson. Well, that's true if you want to star in a bad sales movie. All right. <laughs> but, if, <laughs> but if you want to be a legitimate salesperson, introverts actually have an advantage because their inclination is more in talking and learning about the other person than putting the spotlight on themselves. 
When salespeople put the attention on themselves, they become, I think, very, um, well, they become worthy of the sleazy, slimy, shady, slick, sneaky, sly, self-interested, self-centered label, right? And none of us like that kind of person. None of us want to be that kind of person. And just between you and me and Altavis, I'm an introvert as well. I have been tested. I'm an introvert. In fact, I run a, a sales company and I'm one of only two people in the entire company who are introverts. And I started a business in sales. So why is this? Let me, let me just suggest something to you. Most salespeople and those who are beginning in sales uh, or those who think, who know that they have to do it in order to be successful, though they don't want to do it. They have this misconception that it's all about pitching the product. In fact, we've been taught, you know, you got to have an elevator pitch and, okay, give me your pitch, you know, let me hear it. And that's completely the opposite of what sales should be. I had a brother who said to me one time when I was young, Rob, you ought to be in sales. And I thought he meant because I was a good talker. And that was very offensive to me. It's like, you know, you think, you think I, I, I could work on a car lot or you think I look good in plaid or those exactly. types of things. Exactly. Right. And what he said is, no, Rob, you're a good listener. That's why you ought to be in sales. So let me just share this with you. As I said, most of us think that we have to start a pitch. The problem with salespeople generally is that they've spent most of their training learning about their product, about their service, right? And so what are they inclined to do once they get on a phone or once a customer approaches them in the store? They're inclined to talk about that product because they're so well-versed in it. They're confident in it. They like it. And that's all good. But what I do is I teach salespeople, don't focus on the product because your product could be objectionable, right? It could be too expensive. It could be too big, too small. It could be, I don't like the right, it's not the right color for me. It takes too long to get here. I can give you all kinds of objections to your product. But here's what I love about your product. I love the results it brings me. Whether that result is, it saves me money, it's more convenient, it's less hassle, it's more hassle-free. Whether that result is, it gives me peace of mind, it makes me look better, makes me sound better. You focus on the results of your product, nobody's gonna object to that. You focus on the product itself, and that's the start of a debate. That's an argument. And that's what makes sales difficult. Mm, I'm glad you said that too. Because one of the things that I did mention was I was great on being able to upsell. And I think people think that you're, you like have to hammer somebody and, oh, and you want this and you want that. And you want to, you're just like kind of piling all this stuff on top of whatever it is that they purchased. And it was like, no, you just, you're listening. And that's what it is. So if someone bought shoes and they're going to a prom, you know that they're going to need jewelry. You know that they're going to need a bag. You're listening. And if there's somebody that like me doesn't like to shop, then getting them everything right where they are is like heaven sent. You know, you, you've said so much in that, in that little bit right there, Altamese. I want to comment on very quickly. First of all, we talked about, I'm going to be your sales doctor. Salespeople should look at their profession like a physician looks at theirs. When the patient enters the examination room, what is the patient expecting the doctor or nurse to do? They're expecting that person to assess their situation, whether it's through tests, x-rays, you know, take the, get the, th the, the tongue depressor out, you know, take my vital signs. Help me understand, I want you to thoroughly understand me before you prescribe a solution for me. If you don't do it that way, doctor, I'll call you a quack, right? <laughs> and yet in sales, what happens? The customer expects the salesperson, well, just tell me what you got. And so I tell the customer, look, I got a lot of stuff. What's best for you? I don't know yet because I need to assess your, your situation. I wanna do a thorough examination of the patient, if you will, because I think that's being professional, that's being honest, that's being thorough. 
And so when you talk about upselling as well, I love how you suggested that upselling and really selling in, in its at its core is really nothing more than making recommendations and suggestions. You're making recommendations based on the needs, the preferences, the time frame, and the budgetary capability of the person that you're talking to. You have to learn those four components. Again, needs, preferences, time frame, and budget. As you learn those, you'll then make a very, a very well considered um, presentation or recommendation or suggestion. So if that's the way you look at your role in sales, you're not going to feel icky about it. You're going to feel like if you don't give a recommendation or, or a suggestion that you're withholding valuable information from that person. And how is that good customer service? Oh, I love that you, you put that twist on it as well, because that is a part of having great customer service is being able to not guess what they want, but actually have a conversation with them and determine what they want or what they need. And it always goes to this next piece is so many people get scared of the no. Hmm. That and is like the Achilles heel because it's like you do all of this great work and then you hear a no and it's like, oh. That's right. That's right. Well, I learned a long time ago. And once I learned this from my own experiences, I could sleep at night. I could worry. I, I no longer had to worry or feel anxious about the no. Here, here is a simple fact. No is not forever. No is for now. As long as I've done the sales process properly, as long as I've treated this person honestly and thoughtfully, if they say no to me, that's their way of saying, you know what, right now, it's not the best time for me. My circumstances don't allow me to say yes. But I know, Altaviz, in everybody's life, something is constant. We call it change. And so when I've gone through the sales process appropriately with someone and they say no to me, then I know that in a month, in two months, in a half a year, their situation could change. And when it is changing, I want to be there for them. So this is why I follow up with people who have said no to me. And it would go like this, Altaviz, this is Rob. You and I spoke in late 2021. I'm now calling you in early 2022. Last time we spoke, I know it wasn't the right time for you and I to engage in a relationship. I know it wasn't the right time for you to utilize our product or our service, but I'm sure in your life, like in mine, things are changing all the time. In your business, things are changing all the time, just like in mine. And that's why I wanted to re-engage with you today to see if this might be a better time for me to provide you the results that are so important to you. That follow-up is so important. I think we, you know, again, there has to be a, it has to be a healthy habit that we have in business. Is That's the right. Yes. And, and when you give a follow-up, don't start by saying, hey, I just wanted to check in. I just wanted to touch base. I want to follow up. I know we all say that. And you're ouch, killing yourself. Ouch, Rob, ouch, ouch, <laughs> ouch. I know. But here's, here's why that's not helpful. Again, I'm your sales doctor here right? The door is closed. Nobody's hearing this, just you and me. But the reason why I'm saying I just want to check in or touch base with you is unhelpful is because it doesn't suggest that I'm bringing anything new to the follow-up. I'm just kind of going back to our last conversation. When your circumstances caused you to say no, I don't want to go back to that. I want to look forward with you. So when I make the follow-up call, Altaviz, it's like this. Altaviz, Back in November of 2021, when we first spoke, at that time, you said it wasn't the right time because of, except because of this or that. Well, now that I'm speaking to you in the first quarter of 2022, I wanted to share with you some new information that I think you would find very useful or very interesting or very valuable for you and your family, for you and your business. So I'm always giving you new information every time we speak. 
That way it's not a babysitting call. Hey, I'm just checking in to see if you've you know, done what I asked you to last time, but rather I'm calling and providing you new value. And it also suggests just as your life and business is changing, so is ours. So are our products. They're always getting better. We're always innovating. So I'll always say, I want to give you some new information since we last spoke. I love that. So I have to ask this question. So with all the sales experience that you've had, what is a moment that you can look back on and say, that definitely did not go as planned? <laughs> I've had them because nothing in sales is 100%, right? I mean, uh, yes, even Hall of Famers strike out at the plate, right? So I, I've had those. And I think the times that have, it's happened to me, I, I'm, there was one particular incident where I thought this was a no-brainer. We had, we had done so much to, um, to get to know the prospect who we thought was going to be a great client of ours. And we felt that our services were going to provide them terrific results. And, and then when, what we learned is that we covered all of, the, all of the objections on the surface of the water, but there were, there were objections at the base of the ocean that we didn't even anticipate. And so I call those, the difference is public concern. A public concern is price, you know, can you get it to me fast enough? Are we a good fit? But then there are private concerns. And the private concern in this particular case was the person I was talking to, who I thought was the decision maker, they already had it in their mind. They were going to quit this company. And they didn't want to say yes when they knew that they weren't going to be there to actually engage in our training. And they didn't want to do it for their successor. So I'm not saying I would have learned that if I would have been more thoughtful in my, in my assessing of them, but I probably looking back, I probably could have asked them more forward thinking questions. Like, give me a, give me a view of what the landscape looks like six months from now, eight months from now at your company. And then I probably would have learned some of those hidden secrets, which we call private concerns and uh, would have saved all of us a lot of time and heartache. Oh my goodness. Speakeasy podcast listeners. I hope y'all, took notes on that. If you didn't, it's okay. Hit pause, hit rewind, go back, listen to it, write it down. Uh, because that was a gem right there. There are things that happen, guys, that we cannot account for, that we just can't plan for. We just don't know. And so being able to learn from that experience, because what Rob just shared with you guys was that yes, he went through that, but here's what he learned from it. Mm -hmm. And being able to learn from the experience and take it and use it as a tool or resource when you go into the next experience is progress. You know, that's what maturity in business, it looks like. And we do have to mature in business. We can't always say we don't like sales. I know guys. Trust me, I've had to make those changes, but it's a process. Like, don't think that it has to change overnight, but that's why you have people like Rob to give you the resources and information. So with that being said, Rob, let the studio audience know how they can reach out to you uh, for more information and also how they can get a copy of the book. Oh, yes. Well, simply go to our website, GameFaceInc.com, GameFaceInc.com, and you'll learn how to get the book. You'll learn about our brand new masterclass that we've launched. Um, I've been doing sales training for corporations at live events and virtual events for nearly 30 years. And now we're making all of this content available through an individual masterclass where I can actually engage in one-on-one -on -one coaching with your listeners. Uh, so we're very excited about that. It's the culmination of, of decades of training. Um, and, and I would also add that there's a, something a little special I, I'd like to provide to the Speakeasy audience um, because we all share something in common. We're all fans of Altavis. And we also 
We want to be better influencers. We want to be better persuaders. We want to be better motivators and educators and inspirers, which by the way, Altavis, that's the definition of selling. It's to be an influencer and a persuader and a motivator and to educate people, to give them information that's going to make their life or their condition better. When you do that, you're selling people. And so I want to give some additional content just to your audience. It's three weeks of video sales tips, just short video tips that they can each get one at a time every day for three weeks that will kind of give them a jump start on the day. Um, they motivate us because they're based in principle, but they're actual techniques that you can apply that day. And so, um, Altavis, let's make that available to your audience, however you feel is best. But uh, I'd love to connect with people who are like minded. Awesome. So speak easy audience, the information for that will be down in the description area. And, and listen, this is for you. I want you to understand that this has been this literally an opportunity for us to be able to make some forward steps in business and in life. Every episode brings you some great tips and resources, but also I want you to go and connect with the guests because they can give you even more insight than what they gave on the episode that you check out. With that being said, remember that this is all for you because there is no Speak Easy podcast without the Speak Easy podcast listeners. The audience, you guys are amazing. Let us know how you resonated with this particular episode by leaving a review on your favorite podcasting platform. And until next time, guys, don't forget to press it out. See ya.